Okay, hold up. Before you go writing your hate-filled comment about how I'm paid by AMD, Intel, or NVIDIA, or anything else, uh, or one side's better than the other, feel free to watch the end of the video first before you go do that. This video is something that I've spent hours researching, writing, filming, and editing, and is aimed at showing you the facts running AMD Zen, and supported with research and uh, facts, why I think AMD Zen is it's imperative that that is successful. If you want to look at any of my sources, I'll leave links to everything I've taken notes from in the description down below. Right, so let's get started. For those of you who've been living on a rock, AMD is a company that, as a simplification, makes CPUs, GPUs, and APUs. Zen is their upcoming architecture for the new Summit Ridge CPUs, and they were rumored to be launching sometime in January, although it's uh, been confirmed as such that it's uh, at least the first half of the year, if not Q1. Finance has been a pretty big issue for AMD in recent years. As recent as last year, they were making a $660 million loss over the year, with the only profitable areas being their enterprise and semi-custom areas, aka the consoles, uh, but still not making enough to cover the pretty large losses made by the CPU and GPU sales. Compare that to Intel who made 14 billion last year and Nvidia who made 614 million in profits, AMD aren't doing so well. Happily though, in quarter three of 2016, they did post a $27 million profit, which is likely due to the uh, increase in GPU sales. Speaking of GPU sales, their market share is also up in the GPU division, which is actually great news for everyone, and I'll explain why in a second. It's up from 18% last year to 30% in quarter three of 2016, dropping Nvidia's share to 70% from 82 in CPUs, AMD held just 12% market share of all x86 CPUs, where Intel held 87.7%. In Steam gamers, the trends don't quite line up with the market share figures. According to the Steam hardware survey, there are more than 3 GTX 1060s for every RX 480, and there are more than 10 GTX 1070s to an RX 482. For more info on this, I highly recommend Adore TV's video on why the GPU war is over. He does a brilliant job of researching and explaining why AMD's revenues on the GPU front have always been low, despite often beating in video on price, performance, power or heat and all that sort of stuff, so do go check that out. I'll leave a link in the description down below. At this point you're probably wondering why you with your Intel CPU and your Nvidia GPU should even care, but this is something that affects you too. Intel and Nvidia both need a competitor to be forced to innovate. We're seeing this already with their Brodo E pricing, where their 10 core 6950X costing $1,700 on launch is a full $700 more than the last generation 8 core 5960X. Interestingly, AMD actually has an agreement with Intel to not sue each other, as all x86 CPUs are based on Intel's IP, but 64-bit architecture is an AMD patent, meaning if they didn't have that, they could both sue each other, and technically they would win or lose, win. Point is, they, they do need each other. Nvidia doesn't necessarily have the best reputation when it comes to consumer friendliness. I mean, the GTX 970 lawsuit is only one of many scandals they've dealt with in the recent years, so uh, competition is completely key here. One thing I would like to mention though is that as we saw in Adore TV's video, and you I should definitely check that out, Competition doesn't necessarily always mean that you guys end up going and buying the best product. Uh, we saw that he heavily with the 260 versus, I think it was the 4850 uh, GPUs, where uh, even though the 4850 was a just a considerably better card, uh, and perhaps 4870 as well, uh, there were considerably better cards, considerably smaller, considerably uh, you know better power usage and, and temperatures. Uh, the 260 and 280s still massively outsold the AMD cards, which is where, uh, just because as, uh, as the marketing people like to say, Nvidia just has the mind share. They just have the impression that they are the better cards, even if they are actually performing less, especially performing less for the money. So uh, it's very important just to make sure you buy the best card out there rather than just the one that you uh, you know necessarily think is the best card without necessarily fully researching it. But again, you guys are what I would probably consider enthusiasts anyway, so you probably do watch benchmarks and that sort of thing before buying uh, parts and graphics cards. So. Uh, yeah, it's just important for the masses to start doing that too. So for me, one of the main reasons why Zen needs to succeed here is that a, a great example of this is how long have we had a quad-core be at the top of the i7 mainstream product stack? 
how long has since the 2700K or even the uh, uh, i7-950 been a quad-core CPU that is the best you can get and the main difference has just been slight instruction per clock improvements generally like 10% uh, maybe 15 at a push uh, and general slight clock speed pushes so for me uh, and obviously well i can't actually legally tell you uh, i can guarantee you that nothing's going to change in the very near future either for from any you know uh, future launches that might happen um it really you know for example if you have a, a 3770k or something like that or even a 4790k there's pretty much no point in you upgrading to a 6700K or whatever else may come out fairly shortly um, because the, the, the performance just isn't that much different. The feature sets slightly are the, the kind of main pull, you know, if you want an NVMe SSD and USB 3.1 and stuff like that, then yes, perhaps that's a reason to upgrade, but still it's just uh, the the there isn't really much of a pull and the fact that AMD just doesn't have a competitor in that range at the moment means that they can just keep on doing it they can keep charging the same price and in fact as I said earlier with the Broadwell EC views charging a ludicrous amount of money uh, mostly so that they can protect their own server division but again that's a that's a whole different uh, kettle of fish so um, yeah, it's uh, it's just a really you know, big shame, and especially on the NVIDIA side, where we're seeing decent performance improvements, uh, but at the same time, there is a lot of sort of anti-consumer things that generally go on. I mean, the 970 uh, issue scandal, whatever you want to call it, is certainly one of those things. So. For me, uh, for AMD to succeed here, it means that a better world, better world for PC gaming for everyone, uh, not just AMD, Nvidia, and Intel customers necessarily, or you know, in any individual group, um, because it means that Intel will make better CPUs, which means that AMD will make better CPUs, and then you'll have choice to pick which one is best for you. So. Uh, that's uh, that's my thing really. I think that's the the main gist is if they don't have a competitor, they're just going to end up uh, doing what they're currently doing, which is not much. So this is the bit in the video where I get to talk about AMD's New Horizon event that happened yesterday. Now in the event, basically they spent most of the time talking about their new name, uh, I guess the replacement for FX, which is Ryzen. Now this is uh, obviously, you know, uh, Horizon, ha ha ha, and Zen, ha ha ha, but uh, basically it's a pretty cool name, obviously it's fairly memorable, um, if, uh, if nothing else, and obviously Zen is the uh, actual microarchitecture that makes up uh, the Ryzen and chips. I believe Summit Ridge is the code name for the specific uh, kind of brand of high-end chips that they will be uh, offering and they haven't given too many details away. The main details that they've talked about specifically are that it's an 18 core 16 thread using simultaneous multi-threading. Uh, it's 3.4 gigahertz or higher has 20 megabytes of L3 plus L2 cache, and also has uh, AMD Sense MI, which is basically uh, what seems like Intel's sort of CPU boost, uh, clock speed booster uh, on steroids. Um, they have a neural net predictor for uh, fetching uh, instructions, as well as precision boost and pure power. Uh, it's also the extended frequency range, which is meant to basically, depending on what cooling solution you're using, uh, will automatically overclock the CPU. Uh, although I'm not in entirely sure if that will help, uh, that will let you exceed the uh, standard boost frequency or not, but uh, we will have to find out about that in the, in the coming months. Anyway, this is their comparison between the, the 6900K running at stock frequencies still uh, boost allowed here whereas the Zen or Ryzen CPU doesn't actually have uh, boost available on it, so at least in this demo, so uh, it is very impressive to see that uh, Ryzen is currently either equal to the 6900K or beating the 6900K in this handbrake demo although of course we will have to test this uh, you know, first hand to make sure that this isn't uh, some sort of trickery but uh, it seems like it's a, a very impressive chip and I'm very pleased to see the performance outcomes that are are uh, currently available and of course we will need to see the pricing uh, as well as sort of what happens with the overall uh, market once Zen is released but uh, yeah overall I'm quite optimistic. So that about wraps it up. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm an AMD nor Intel or Nvidia fanboy here. Uh, I've tried to limit bias as much as possible and I've actually had you know bad uh, interactions and thoughts with them uh, with all of them so it's not really uh, you know I, I couldn't call myself a fan of any specific one here. They do obviously make uh, nice products uh, on their own so 
that's cool, but uh, yeah, this is obviously just my opinion and I'd love to hear what you think about it. Obviously, uh, this is uh, definitely something that needs discussing, so uh, the comments is a really good place to do that. Um, feel free to also follow me on Facebook and Twitter and let me know what you think there too. This is definitely something that I want to continue the conversation on. I don't want this to just be a me shouting into the wind, you guys hearing it and then just forgetting about it. I'd really like to hear your thoughts um, and what uh, you know AMD should do, what Intel and Nvidia should do and all that sort of stuff. So let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this sort of video, I definitely want to hear from you in the comments down below too to make sure that I actually know to make more of these videos. Feel free to subscribe and like as well if you did. Feel free to dislike if you didn't, by the way, but please do let me know what you didn't like in the comments down below, if it's just this uh, format, this style, uh, or whatever I, I said, let me know. Feel free to use my Amazon affiliate links as well. It genuinely helps me out when you're buying anything on Amazon. It's only a click and doesn't cost you anything otherwise, so please do use that. Uh, and otherwise, feel free to, uh, yeah, just carry on enjoying more videos. Um, I've got a great ITX uh, or a uh, living room PC video coming out on Friday, so do stick around for that. Uh, that's with the ITX build that we did a couple of weeks ago, so feel free to check that one out in the meantime. And uh, yeah, otherwise, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.